that you hear them say Come back home, Come back home. To the land of the sun and the sea and the palmy beaches Well, some difference this from Hockenheim in October. Welcome to the Bahamas to the inaugural Atlantis Superboat Challenge. This new event bringing powerboat racing back to the exciting and colourful islands for the first time in almost a decade. The race organised in just 12 weeks. And that included an act of parliament to lift harbour speeds. Christopher Columbus, not the only person to enjoy the uh, Caribbean welcome here. The race crews enjoying some of the attractions in the build-up to the race. The Atlantis Resort and Casino, the Race HQ. Nassau, the capital of the Bahamas, providing the home for the race and a base for the racers and a little bit of colourful distraction as well. And I smell hibiscus in the tropic skies above. Look at the boat and the conch and fish are dawning. I know that it's Nassau and everything about it I love. Oh, island boy, you got your mind on your job in New York but your heart in the Caribbean. The Governor-General, Sir Orville Turnquest, received the organisers and then the crews chanting uh, a visit to the walkthrough aquarium, the Atlantis Resort, with this fabulous display of sea life without getting your feet wet. And then taking place, a parade through the town of Nassau. And the boat's uh, interesting carnival floats for the locals. A big weekend for them and for the racers alike. The boat's firing up at the uh, colourfully named Hurricane Hole Harbour for the noon start. So let's take a look at the circuit, chaps. Excellent, thank you. The race will be over 12 and a half laps of Paradise Island by way of Coots Corner, Bacardi's Bend and under the bridge. Down to Breezes, around Lighthouse Corner. I wonder where that got its name from and back across the open sea. And some fabulous and varied machinery here as well. These really the top flight offshore powerboat racers. 22 crews heading out for the start in front of the Atlantis Resort and by the event sponsors. They wait for the flag. And the thundering horsepower signals the fact that they're away. Thousands of horsepower unleashed. The world's fastest powerboat set to revive the great tradition of racing in the Bahamas. A superb start and streaking into the lead right away. Alcone Motorsports, Matt Alcone at the wheel. And John Reban in Ohio Steel. A surprise second position leading the rest. On board with Daniel Schinoli and Fabio Buzzi in La Gran Argentina, their three diesel engine powered boat making a slower start than they rather expected, but as we can see there, picking up places fast and furiously, the 50-foot Butsi designed monohull with its SeaTech uh, diesel engines, also designed by Butsi, the throttle man. Passing Ohio Steel, the 38-year-old Argentine, there he is, taking a buffeting in the cockpit despite the smooth water. Under the bridge they go, threading the needle. The boat's hitting 100 miles an hour. That's uh, about 120 knots as they pass under the bridge, joining Nassau and New Providence Island with Paradise Island, the base for the race. And just look at the wake they're throwing up. Shioli. Three men in a boat, father and son Art and Mike Girard, and navigator Mike Horn in the modified glass. And these three in their cat, hoping for a taste of victory. Alcani Motorsports trying to extend the lead, and in these calm waters, hitting a staggering top speed of over 140 miles an hour. Alcani's backup boat, that is, in fact. This is Gran Argentina, the Italian boat, trying to close up on him. It has beaten Alcani already this season. But Alcani completes his first full flying lap of an average speed of 120 miles an hour. The pace is really hot. 
but the weather is somewhat of a surprise. You'd expect sun in the Bahamas. They've got rain. Stuart Haim with throttle man Jerry Impresia in recovery have moved up to third position in the open class. Ohio Steel down in fourth position. That is Gran Argentina threading the eye of the needle at 100 plus miles an hour through the uh, through the bridge. Stunning stuff. Here is Stuart Haim and here is Ohio Steel fourth place being chased by the Del Rey brothers they're in executor John Rayban in the Ohio Steel boat interestingly enough he runs the company and therefore can afford to pay for all this Gran Argentina Schioli a national hero back in Buenos Aires and a friend of uh, President Menem and this man drives Single-handed, he lost his right arm in a near-fatal powerboat crash over seven years ago. Concha Tack there, second amongst the sports boats. And there is Rick Felton, the uh, high-risk boat. And a great shot from the rear wing, yes, they have them, of Gran Argentina. Alcone Motorsports ahead, but rather too far ahead at the moment for us to see his wake. Can they? Around the lighthouse turn, go the three-man crew in airborne. Now well in the lead of the modified class, catering for the shorter 35-foot inboard engined boats. And there's 11 Alconi starting to extend his lead again now. Driver Matt is a relative novice. This is only his second year, in fact, of offshore powerboat racing. But his throttle man, Tony Gilbraith, has been in the sport for 20 years. Onboard camera in the helicopter there for us. But uh, more importantly, the medical and diving teams are carried as well. The VIPs in Hurricane Hole, not enjoying the rain, but enjoying the racing anyway. And across the waters at Potter's Bay, Jim Horn retires the Fort Lauderdale Flyer, the three-engine superboat out with technical problems. Richard Ginsburg and Don Smith in seven up. I think they've won the stock class. Sadly, they haven't quite completed the requisite number of laps because they lost count. Alconi maintains his hot pace. And this looks like becoming one of the fastest ever professional powerboat races. The event just at two-thirds distance, the weather clearing up, and another ultra-fast 100-mile-an-hour-plus lap. Ohio Steel, a lap down on Alconi and La Grande Argentina but also about to put a lap on G. Re John Reban's skater. This uh, classic battle between the two here at 140 miles an hour, making it very difficult indeed for the helicopters to keep up. Look at the angle of attack of the, uh, the chase copter there. Gran Argentina on the right-hand side of the picture. Ohio Steel on the left. And uh, no, he's not a spectator at all. A mere 400 horsepower there in uh, the 46-foot skater. That was S2, John Reban. Makes them real uh, tiddlers in the Giants' pond. Alconi still leads, though. Lap eight, his average up to 117 miles an hour. Staggering stuff, just two laps to go. Reliability is Gran Argentina's strength. The four diesels never miss a beat, but will the petrol engine boat of Alconi be able to lead? Gran Argentina, actually nearly a mile away from us at the beginning of that shot. The foreshortening effect of the telephoto lens is uh, quite staggering. But this unique boat, designed, built by Fabio Buzzi, Turin University design student who's been in powerboats all his working life, and he designed the diesel engines as well. They produce 1,100 horsepower each. Twin turbos and a sophisticated injection system as well you might expect. Here is Alconi. Powerboat racing uh, for his second year, 41-year-old away Californian, enjoying himself enormously. Taking the chequered flag and throttling back as he goes under the bridge. Just under the 100 miles an hour, the twin-winged Gran Argentina finishes second, clinching the American Superboat title. Schioli, delighted undoubtedly, can almost hear the cheers from the dockside. 
Mattel Kenny, the winner from Gran Argentina. And executor, or execute if you prefer, in third position. After the champagne and the break, we'll be back with more action. <laughs>